What's up, Comies? Chef Billy Parisi here, and if you've ever wanted to make naan bread at home because it is so delicious, but obviously don't have a huge tandoori oven, I'm going to show you how to do it right on the stovetop, and it is absolutely delicious. We are huge naan bread fans in our family, and while we can't always agree on which dish to choose at the local Indian restaurant, we can always agree on naan bread because it is fantastic. But now you can bring that Indian restaurant right to your kitchen because dude, this homemade naan bread recipe is amazing. That's like I always say, homemade food from scratch just tastes better. More smiles, more happiness to your table, my friends. We're gonna be doing this video in partnership with my good friends over at Bob's Red Mill. So let's not waste any more time and get started. What we wanna do is add some flour right to a bowl. I'm going to be using Bob's Red Mill all-purpose flour. Fantastic for breads, for cakes, you name it. Great all around flour. Add it to a bowl. Next, we're gonna sprinkle in some baking soda, little bit of baking powder, some powdered sugar. Next, some sea salt. And then using a whisk, go ahead and mix it together until it is completely combined. Get all those ingredients infused and then just using the back part of your hand, make a well right in the center of those dry ingredients in that bowl. You may see other recipes out there that are using yeast. That is not in a traditional non-bread. And honestly, half of the recipes may have baking powder and the other half may not, it may just be baking soda. But regardless, this is the way that you should be making it. It's more authentic, it's more delicious, and dude, is it so tender. You're going to love it. Now what we wanna do is add in some wet ingredients right to that well. Go ahead and add in some veggie oil. Next, some whole milk plain yogurt. And now using your hands, start to mix it together while pouring in some whole milk. You may not need all of it, you may need every last drop, but start to mix it and incorporate it, add a little bit, start mixing it together with your hands, squeezing all those ingredients together. I'm going to need all of it, so I'm gonna pour the rest in, get all the ingredients incorporated. Now what we do is knead it for about five to six minutes. We want all those flavors to make sure they are completely combined, so take the time to do this. And yes, you can do this in a stand mixer with the hook attachment on medium speed for three to four minutes. At this point, when it's to a nice ball, just simply cover it up with plastic wrap and let it sit in a warm place for about 60 to 90 minutes. Here is an awesome trick, you guys. If you don't have a proofer at home, like most people don't have a proofer, put it in the oven, make sure the oven is off. Simply turn on that oven light. That will generate enough heat to make that perfect proofing sort of temperature in your oven in between sort of 90 and 110. It's absolutely fantastic, great proofer. Now, go ahead and go back over to your countertop because this is a great time to make some garlic butter because yes, this is garlic non bread, my friends. We're going to be using a garlic press to make sure it's finely minced, so go ahead and add your garlic cloves to the press. Squeeze it until it completely gets through all there. And then like I like to do, I use a little knife to sort of scrape off the rest of the garlic. Now at this point, drop some unsalted butter in there going on the cooktop over medium low heat. We just want to melt the butter and they always say once you smell garlic, it's finished, it will be fragrant. Take it off, it will cook a little bit more obviously after you remove from the heat. Set it to the side and go hang out until our bread is done proofing. My bread has been resting for about 75 minutes and when I say proof and rest, I'm not looking for a two times or three times the volume. There's no yeast in there, but it will definitely increase in size, probably by about 50%, which is perfect. Go ahead and remove the plastic wrap and sort of re-knead it quickly, maybe for 30 seconds, just to incorporate everything again, keep things moving, and then what we wanna do is make 12 equal size individual dough balls. So go ahead and rip a piece off there and roll it in your hand. Once they are to that perfect size, set it right on a sheet tray lined with parchment paper, maybe dusted with a tad bit of flour. Go ahead and throw a towel right over top. Now what we wanna do is start heating up our saute pan. If you have a non-bread pan or like a crepe pan, this is perfect. But if you don't, do not worry. You can use a regular 10 or 12 inch saute pan. Put it on the heat over medium heat. 
get it to that temperature, go back over. Now let's roll out some of this dough on a lightly floured surface, just a little bit of flour here. Add that dough ball down and then using a rolling pin, we're just gonna go back and forth, back and forth till it's a nice long oval shape. Once it is to this consistency, use a brush or even the backside of your hand and rub water all over the top part of that rolled out dough. Now go over to the pan, put it down. It's gonna take only 60 seconds to 90 seconds for this to cook. The reason it is wet is so that it sticks to the pan. You'll know when it is done cooking because the bubbles will come up out of the dough. You see that there? Now we're gonna flip it over. And just like you're roasting marshmallows, my friend, cook the other side of that bread. If big, huge air pockets form, so what? Delicious, even better. You wanna brown as much as you can on all the sides on the top there, on every little square centimeter. Now let me stop right there. I'm not one of those guys who likes super dark, extra crunchy bread. And if that is you, like my wife who loves this, do it longer. Get those nice dark charred marks on the bottom part of that dough. You'll love it. For me, I like a light golden brown. That's just me. Don't be mad. It's just how I like my nine bread. Now let's head over to your countertop. What we're gonna do is just set it down on a sheet tray or if you have a plate, that's totally fine. Now brush it with all that delicious garlic butter. Make sure it's completely covered because dude, this is gonna make the flavor so much better. You are absolutely gonna love it. And then I usually finish it with a little bit of fresh chopped parsley. Golly, does this look absolutely fantastic and it goes so amazing with any Indian recipe dish out there. You see it at restaurants and now you're bringing it to your kitchen. This naan bread is so delicious. There's absolutely no reason you should not make this because it's fantastic. And if you love bread, be sure to check out my Kamu flour bread recipe. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and we will see you on the next video. It's amazing, bro.